Welcome back for another video on the best YouTube channel ever. Today's video will be about a gangster named David Ray Fierro. David Fierro, who went by the nickname Big D. On the evening of January 6, 1985, Sam Alessi was robbed and murdered in front of the small grocery store which he owned with his wife Trudy and Glenn Avon. David, who was on parole for burglary, was arrested two days later. He was linked to the crimes by eyewitness identifications, fingerprints which he left on the victim's truck, blood stains in his car, and money from the robbery found in his wallet. As recounted at trial, the facts of this tragic episode unfolded as follows. About 6 p.m. on the evening in question, Sam and Trudy Alisi were preparing to close their store for the night. On Sunday evenings, they planned to deposit the day's receipt in the night slot of their bank and then go to dinner. Trudy had placed in her purse approximately $4,000 compromised of checks, money orders, and about $1,000 in cash. The cash was in 50 and 100 denominations. Trudy observed Sam look into his wallet, which he carried in his back pants pocket for money to pay for dinner. They left through the front doors of the market and approached Sam's pickup truck. Sam opened the passenger door for Trudy and circled around the back of the truck to the driver's side. As Trudy lost sight of Sam, she heard loud talking from the rear of the truck. Suddenly, she saw a kid trying to unlock the driver's side door with Sam's keys. She became scared and heard Sam holler, Watch your purse, honey. Trudy opened her door to join her husband and at that moment was confronted by the same kid she had seen moments earlier. He demanded money. Trudy responded, all right, all right, and opened her purse and handed him a bundle of currency. He then grabbed the purse and ran toward the rear of the truck out of view. Trudy thereupon started out of the truck and heard a shot. Running to the front of the store, she found Sam on the ground bleeding. As she screamed for help, a light-colored car sped out of the parking lot and turned onto Mission Boulevard and toward the freeway. That same evening, Carol DeCenso and her husband Antonio were driving on Mission Boulevard in the area of Trudy's Market. Carol was in the rear passenger seat. As they approached the market, Carol observed three men standing in a group. One was dressed in a white short sleeve t-shirt. The man in the center, Sam Alisi, was dressed in dark clothing. The man to Sam's left was dressed in a black sleeveless tank top shirt. As the DeCenso's car drove past, Carol saw and heard a gunshot blast fired by the man in the white t-shirt. Sam slumped to his knees and fell over. Seconds later, the man in the white t-shirt straddled the fallen body, stretched out his arm, and fired another shot into the victim. Carol DeCenso then observed the man in the white t-shirt bend over, put his arms around the victim in a hugging type motion, and reached underneath them. In the meantime, the other man in the dark shirt, who had been standing nearby, started to run away. The shooter followed, running toward a car which had its lights on. Moments later, Benita Watson, who was a passenger in another car traveling down Mission Boulevard, noticed a light-colored AMC Pacer with a chrome luggage rack traveling in the same direction. Miss Watson heard a woman scream and heard shouts to follow that car. The Pacer then accelerated and pulled away. Sam was dead when the police arrived at the scene. His car keys and wallet were missing. Blood spots and a bloody shoe print were observed leading away from the body. Based on the descriptions of the assailant and the getaway car and conversations with local law enforcement officers, Sergeant Turley of the Riverside Sheriff's Department focused on David as a possible suspect. Within several days, it was discovered that four fingerprints lifted from Sam's truck matched David's fingerprints. Shortly thereafter, David was detained and taken into custody. When he was stopped, he was driving an AMC Pacer with a luggage roof rack. A search of David's Pacer revealed dry blood in the area of the front passenger door. Testing determined that it was not that of David, but was consistent with the blood of Sam, the victim. Victim died of two gunshot wounds to the chest. One wound was consistent with having been fired from a distance of up to 12 inches while the victim was standing, allowing the bullet to exit through the back. The other was a larger contact wound, meaning the muzzle of the gun was in contact with the victim's clothes. The nature and size of the entry wound, the bullet's trajectory, the crutch type injuries to the back, and the piece of bullet lodged in the back all indicated that the victim was lying on the ground when the shot was fired. Dr. Hunter, who performed the autopsy, determined that the smaller wound was inflicted first and that the larger contact wound was inflicted shortly thereafter. Either wound would have been fatal. David initially got the death penalty and was on death row for years until his appeal went through and he got resentenced to life without parole. 
David Fierro is the only Mexican Mafia member from Fontana, California. He got made way back in the 90s. He still runs the show out in Fontana.